Hello, boys and girls, this is Mrs. Craft. I've otherwise become Daffy Duck because I have made some huge mistakes. But that's okay, because it's Wacky Wednesday. Today is April Fool's, and there's no fooling on the mistakes that Mrs. Craft made. I got a bunch of stuff ready for Taco Tuesday, and guess what? It was really for Wednesday's work. That's what happens when you try to get ahead. But today is April Fool's. Are you going to try to pull an April Fool's joke on your mom or your dad? Or that sister or brother? Just whatever it is, make sure that you're a good sport in case someone plays one on you. Okay, we're off to Wacky Wednesday. Here we go. On Wacky Wednesday today, we're going to start with our spelling. Yesterday, I forgot it. Today, we are not going to forget spelling. It's Wednesday, so today is the day when you write your words. Well, let's say spell them together. Are you ready? Since we forgot yesterday, we're going to double up today. Are you ready? Here we go. Catch. C-A-T-C-H, catch. Bench, B-E-N-C-H, bench. Knife, K-N-I-F-E, knife. I, I hope you're saying them with me. Assign, A-S-S-I-G-N, assign. Did you hear that? Mm, that not, not mm, mm, that, that's at the end of the word. Okay, here we go. Scratch, number five. S-C-R-A-T-C-H, scratch. Knit, K-N-I-T, knit. Kneecap, K-N-E-E-C-A-P, kneecap. Rain, R-E-I-G-N, rain. Hey, maybe Farmer Ted ought to visit us for the rest of this list. Wouldn't that be more fun? Are you ready? Stretch. S-T-R-E-T-C-H, stretch. After my nap, i got to take a big stretch. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Chapter. C-H-A-P-T-E-R, chapter. Couch. I love to lay on the couch. Couch. C-O-U-C-H, couch. Knowledge. K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E, knowledge. You've got a ton of knowledge up there in that noggin of yours. Okay, chase. My dog likes to chase the cat. Does your dog like to do that? Chase. C-H-A-S-E, chase. Match. Oop, Mr. Al, you just need to bump over. M-A-T-C-H, match. Court. Q T period court ounce O Z period ounce pound L B period pound that does not look a bit like the word pound but that's our abbreviation oh let's get down to those vocabulary words no daydreaming allowed for a farmer Ted are you ready here we go D A Y D R E A M daydreaming Happy thought, honesty, H O N E S T E Y, honesty, telling the truth, always tell the truth, even on April Fool's Day. Are you ready? Last one, journey, J O U R N E Y, journey, to travel. I'm going to go on a journey into town to pick up some groceries. Do you need some groceries? I can pick some up for you too. Well, Farmer Ted, he came along to visit today. I hope you have fun saying those words. Today is Wednesday. You don't have to write them, but make sure you say, spell those words if you didn't do it with Mrs. Craft. We're going to practice some rhyming words. Rhyming words sound the same at the end of the word. Not the beginning, but they sound the same at the end. Up on the board, I have a couple words. Can you think of a rhyming word for the word stay? Stay. It's going to need to have the A sound at the end. Remember, this is not on our paper. This is just a little bit of review to keep that knowledge in that noggin of yours. Did your mom ever say noggin? That's what my dad used to call my head all the time. Watch out. Don't bump your noggin. Okay. Stay. Can you think of a word that rhymes with stay? Let's see. Kendall, can you think of one? Okay. I don't know if this is what she said, but maybe there's way or pay or day. That's right. How about thought? Thought. Let's see if you can find a word. Hunter, can you find one that rhymes with thought? Caught. Yeah, I caught a mouse. Another one. That's two in the basement. You think they're going to be outside? Well, it's nice. Okay, caught. Thought and caught. How about flea? That's like kind of a little flea that gets on your dogs. 
you think of one camera? Three. Has to have an E sound at the end. Doesn't have to be spelled the same. How about me? Lee and me. How about T? Mrs. Craft walks a good cup of hot tea. Okay. And the last one is throw. Throw. Quinn, can you think of one for throw? Throw. Oh, I think I heard one. No. She knows a word that rhymes with throw. Throw, no, go. What else? So, I'm going to so. Good job. There were tons of words that rhyme. Good job if you did all those words with us and you remembered how to rhyme words. Okay. I also want to practice contractions. Remember I said it was Wacky Wednesday? Remember my duck? Wacky Wednesday. Mrs. Craft has a confession. I was at home this weekend trying to get ahead. And somehow for me, I just didn't pay. I found these wonderful little taco papers at the Dollar Tree. And I thought, oh, this will be fun. We'll use them, on, use them on Taco Tuesday. I did the work that we should have done for Wednesday, not Tuesday. So today, Wacky Wednesday, we're having tacos too. Did you ever have leftovers? These are our leftovers today. Let's see if you can help me remember our contractions. Shouldn't. Shouldn't. What two words make up shouldn't? Madison, do you remember? Shouldn't. If you said should not, you are correct. Should not. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way. Okay, let's see if Adeline can help me on the next one. Okay, Adeline. Ooh, this is a little tricky one. I'm going to lay these down so I don't spill the whole pile. Okay, are you ready? Adeline won't. Won't. Okay, Dad won't. Let's see, take out the trash. I think I used that one before. Won't. What is won't? What two words goes with won't? I mean, did you get it? If you said will not, you are correct. Good job. Okay, here's the next one. She'll. She'll come to my house after school. She'll. Let's go to um Layla. Can you find some word for that? She'll. Two words. Did you get she will? That's right, she will come to my house after school. Okay, here's the next one. This is a little tricky. It can have two choices. They'd, they'd. Okay, can you think of the two words? Two words. One of the possibilities. Let's see, who can do that? Brady, can you think of one? Okay, I think I heard Brady say it. It could be they would. Or they had. Okay? They would like another slice of cake. They'd like another slice of cake. Or they had come from Alaska to visit us. They'd come from Alaska to visit us. So on this one, make sure you always practice what words you chose first to make sure that it makes good sense. It wouldn't make good sense if I said they had like another piece of cake. That does not make sense. So make sure you always practice first. Okay? Oh! Super simple one. Super simple. Okay, what is it? Let's see. Roman, do you know? I'm correctamundo. I am. Okay, let's see who can get this one. He's. He's. Abel, can you think of that one? This one has two choices with it, too. It could be he is or he has. He's coming to my house. He is coming to my house. Or he's finished all his work. He has finished all his work. It wouldn't sound right if I put, he's finished with all his work. I put, he is, no, no, he has. He has. Okay, good job. Last one. Super simple one. Lucas, don't turns into, uh-huh, do not. Do not. Good job. Now, are you ready to practice a little bit here? This is not on your paper again. I want you, are you ready carefully to follow directions? I want you to get on your tiptoes in a moment and hop. Do you know how to hop? Okay, stand up, okay? I am going to give you a word, but before I give you that word, let's practice. Antonyms are opposites. Up, down, in, out, hot, cold, black, white. Antonyms are opposite. Homonyms, they sound the same, but have different meanings and spellings. So homonyms sound the same, they have different meanings and spellings, okay? So, let's see how well you can do what Mrs. Crab 
up. Oh, there it is. Right beside me the whole time. Okay, if it is a word, if it's an antonym, antonyms, opposites, I want you to hop. If it is a word that sounds the same, oh, you know what? This is crafted that long. So I get for not reading carefully. Okay, sorry. We still need to know what homonyms and antonyms are, but here we go. If it's an antonym, I want you to hop. If it's not an antonym, I want you to tiptoe. Tiptoe. Okay, just like that little mouse tiptoeing through my house. Okay. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Come and go. Come and go. Are you going to hop because it's an antonym? Or are you going to tiptoe because it's not? Are you ready? Hop, come, and go. Which one did you do? If you hopped, you are correct. Okay, here's the next one. Day and night. Day and night. Remember, if it's an antonym opposite, you're going to hop. If it's not, tiptoe. Which one are you doing? If you're hopping, you are correct. Here's the next one. Cook and bake. Cook and bake. Those are kind of the same, aren't they? Okay. These don't sound the same, but they mean the same thing. Cook and bake. You should be tiptoeing across the floor. Okay, here's the next one. Okay. Forward and backward. Forward and backward. Remember, if it's an antonym, you're going to hop. If it's not, which one are you doing? Forward and backward. Did you hop? Good job. That is correct. Okay, here's the next one. Rocks and pebbles. Rocks and pebbles. Are you tiptoeing or are you hopping? Good job. And the last one. Frogs and toads. Frogs and and toes. Toads, not toes. Toads. Frogs and toads. Are you hopping? Or are you tiptoeing? You should be tiptoeing with that one. Good job. Well, today we're going to learn more about adjectives. Remember we learned that an adjective describes a noun. An adjective will tell us how something looks, sounds, smells, feels, or tastes. And yesterday we learned also that we could ask the question and ask, an adjective will ask, what kind? What kind of banana? Yellow banana. What kind of chair? Hard chair. What kind of rock? Hard rock. What kind of bell? Red bell. Okay. Today we're going to talk about it answers the question, how many? That means we're going to have a number. So find your paper for me. We are on page 255. Get a pencil. Okay. Are you ready to work? Okay, I hope so. Let's review one more time about what kind. Here's more of those tacos I forgot. It was in Wednesday's folder. Crazy Mrs. Craft. Let's talk about taco shells. Okay. What describes a taco shell? Crunchy taco shell. Soft taco shell. Hard taco shell. Some of you like hard, some of you like soft. Okay, what about this one? Meat. Spicy meat. Do you like spicy meat? Hot. Okay, it was hot right out of the stove. Beef. It was made with beef meat. Okay. Are you ready? How about this one? Lettuce. Green lettuce. Crunchy lettuce. Shredded lettuce. Okay. Let's see what the next ones are. These are all words describing what kind. Cheese. What kind of cheese is it? Orange cheese, shredded cheese, what does this say? Mixed cheese, you like the white and the orange cheese together? This is crap, yes. And the last one, sour cream, white sour cream, creamy sour cream, cold sour cream. I don't think we want hot sour cream, that'd be awful, let me hold it. Those are words that tell what kind. But today we're going to talk about how many. So when you write a number word today, don't just put the number one or the number two. I want the word for it. Are you ready? We're going to get started. And today, it's pretty simple. I'm going to read through, and you're going to write a number. Do our numbers have to match? They do not have to match. Now, you can't put some people in years past one, put 100 trillion billion. You cannot go past. You can't go past 10 today. Cannot go past 10. 
Are you ready to read sentences with me? Okay, eyes on your paper. Here we go. Write in number word adjective in each blank. Okay, at the top it says, an adjective is a word that describes a noun. It may answer the question, how many? Two cookies, ten pennies. Okay, are you ready? Can't go over ten with our answers. Are you ready? I love camping. My family and I packed blank bags and boxes. How many bags did you pack? Four bags? Two boxes? You decide. But remember, write those words. Okay? Let's write them up here just for a moment. Here's the number words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You're going to choose a number word. Okay, not the number itself, okay? Are you ready? I'm going to keep reading. So did you get the first two we have done? How many bags do you have? How many boxes do you have? The second one says, the second sentence says, My family and I packed. Sorry, that's a repeat. I helped mom. We're on the second line. I helped mom prepare blank sandwiches and blank chocolate chip cookies for our lunch. Find the number words for both of those. Remember, if I go too fast, hit the pause button, and then you can start it up once you finish writing. Okay? I helped mom prepare blank sandwiches and blank chocolate chip cookies for our lunch. Am I for the third sentence? Here we go. We also packed blank packages of marshmallows for campfire treats. We also packed blank packages of marshmallows for campfire treats. I told my brother that I could eat blank s'mores. How many s'mores can you eat? I told my brother I could eat blank s'mores. Mrs. Crack has only one s'more. How about you? I wish we could camp for blank nights. But Dad said we would be able to stay away for blank nights. That's okay. I still love camping. I wish we could camp for blank nights. But Dad said we would only be able to stay for blank nights. That's okay. I still love camping. Okay. Did you get that all done? Remember, you're using these number words to help us. Okay. On the next part, let's see if Mrs. Craft can help you. We're going to look at it on our paper here, and I'm going to write so do it with you, so I'm going to hold it up close, okay? It says, remember. Remember, an adjective may answer the question, what kind or how many? Read the paragraph. Circle the adjective that describes each underlying noun. Remember, an adjective always describes a noun. And a noun is a person, place, or thing. Okay, ready? Get your pencil right. Mrs. Crafts going to use a red marker. You use your pencil. Acadia National Park in Maine has over 45 miles of carriage roads. Okay, so here we are. We're going to look right here. Can you see real close? Okay, miles is underlined. It is a noun. What word comes right in front of it to tell me how many? How many is my um, adjective? How many miles is it? I don't know if I can do this backwards. Let's take an experiment and see. Did you find it? You know what? This is that silly light colored marker. I'm going to get rid of this guy. He is going back in the bin over there, all the way over, where we put all those markers for you guys to use. Okay? Let's see if I can do it better. Let's see if this one's better. Oh my goodness. Way better. Do you agree? That is right there. You should have circled 45. And what kind of ride are we going to take? We're going to take a carriage ride. So if you said carriage, you are okay. Oh, carriage roads. Mrs. Craft can't read backwards either. Carriage roads. Okay. Are you ready for the next sentence? Okay, here we go. You can take a carriage ride through the park in a horse-drawn carriage. I knew I saw a ride in there someplace. You can take a carriage ride. So ride is underlined. What word in front of it that describes what kind of ride it is do I have? Who can help me? Let's see. 
Um, Madison, can you find it? That's right, it's carriage. So right in front of Ryan, did you circle carriage? Right there. Circle carriage. So we're on the third line. All right. The stone roads gently curve around the hills. What kind of roads are they? What kind of roads are they? Layla, what kind of roads are they? That's right, they're stone roads. Right in front of roads. Okay. Well, the stone, sorry, like this is crap spot, looking upside down. Okay, let's start right now with A. Are you ready? Here we go. A quiet ride with beautiful sights is one activity you might enjoy if you visit Acadia National Park. Okay, Abel, can you help me on this one? What kind of ride do we want to take? What kind of ride? You're right. He said quiet. A quiet ride. And Brady, what kind of um, sights are we going to see? What kind of sights? Well, what comes right in front to describe it? That's right. A beautiful sight. Beautiful sights. Good job. Guess what I forgot yesterday? Dictation. I was so excited about Taco Tuesday. I forgot all about it. But today, we're going to do this together. Before we do it, I want to do a quick review of some of our sounds, our special sounds. These special sounds are going to show up in our words that we write for our dictation. Okay, the first one is scurrin. That's right, scurrin, scream, S-C-R. Here's another one, ch and patch. Remember, T-C-H comes after a short vowel sound. So ch and patch. And this other one, oops, sorry, I just turned it around. N and not. We find that in a lot of our spelling words up there. Kneecap and knife and knowledge. Lots of our spelling words have mm sound. That's going to be in the front, okay? Are you ready? You're going to write a sentence today. Are you ready to write your sentence? Okay, here we go. It says, the sharp knife scratched the blue plate. Did you hear some of those special sounds we just reviewed? The sharp knife scratched the blue plate. One more time. The sharp knife scratched the blue plate. Can you repeat one more time? The sharp knife scratched the blue plate. Okay. You ready to check it out? Before you do that, there are two adjectives. Remember, they come before a noun. There's two adjectives. I want you to find those two adjectives and put a circle around them for me. The sharp knife scratched the blue plate. Okay. Did you find two adjectives? I hope you did. Let's put our answers up on the board. You finish writing while I get these two. Okay. The sharp knife scratched the blue plate. Okay, there we go. I forgot to remind you, did you remember what comes always in the front of a sentence? What comes at the end of a sentence? I hope you did. A capital letter and a period. Make sure, maybe you can read it again. That is a period. There's a period right there. Okay, did you get those words right? Did you find some of those special sounds that we already talked about today? You did it knife and a stir and a ch. Okay, those were all special sounds. But what did you circle for the adjective? Remember, we had to circle words that describe a noun. So let's look at oh, knife. Knife is a noun. I hope you circled sharp. Okay. Knife is my is my subject. Scratch is my verb or my action. Blue plate. What kind of plate is it? Blue plate. Plate. What kind of knife is it? Sharp knife. I hope you did very well on that. We need to practice more and more of that. Okay, boys and girls, turn over to the back of your paper. On the back of your paper, we're going to talk again about those words 
that sound the same. Let me find my papers. Mrs. Craft throws them over here. I get in such a hurry. Okay, are you ready? Remember, antonyms are opposite. But today on the back, we're going to talk about homonyms. They sound the same, but have different meanings and are spelled differently. I knew we needed this today sometime. I just put it in the wrong order. So let's go to number one. We'll do a freebie, but then the rest you're going to do on number one by yourself. It says, read the sentences. Mark the circle under the correct word. Mark the circle under NH if the answer is not here. Let's read the first one about Stephen. Stephen made a blank chocolate pie on Saturday. He made a blank chocolate pie on Saturday. He made a whole, H-O-L-E, whole, W-H-O-L-E, are not here. One of those is the correct answer. Does anybody have that answer for me? Ella, did you have it? Glenn, you have I see lots of hands. Kendall, girls all got it. Girls, have, boys, do you have it? Okay, Calvin, I see your hand. Good job. Okay, hole, H-O-L-E, is the kind of hole you dig. H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E is the whole thing. You should have marked W-H-O-L-E. If you mark that, you are correct. So read the rest of those sentences. Mark the answer carefully. If you need help, get some help. Don't get any answers for free. Do your own thinking. Let's go down to number two. Number two, you have got to put in some proofreader's marks. It says, read these sentences about Acadia National Park. Use proofreader's marks to show which words should be capitalized. Place the correct punctuation at the end of the sentence. We know to show something needs to be capitalized, we need to put three lines. Don't forget our word review about nouns. A noun is a person, place, or thing, but a proper noun needs a capital letter. It's a special, excuse me, a special person, place, or thing. Okay? So you're going to do that and put punctuation at the end. Put your carrot and then put your punctuation. Let's do the first one together. Are you ready? Cadillac Mountain is the first place in the United States that the sun shines on each day. So, do you see anything that needs to be a capital? I do. Do you see? Let's see. Who does? I see lots of hands. Kellen's hands. Kendall's hands. That's right. Kellen's hands. All the cuss sounds must know it. Okay. If you said Cadillac, the first word in the sentence, you are correct. Put three lines under Cadillac. There's one more. It's another special word. Remember, it's a special person, a special place. Or a special thing. If you said M in mountain, you are right. Cadillac Mountain is one place. Three lines under the C, three lines under the M. What's going to go at the end of the sentence? Cadillac Mountain is the first place in the United States that the sun shines on each day. But that carrot, is it a telling, asking, or excited? Which one? It's a telling sentence. So you're going to put just a period. Good job. You're going to finish all the way down. Okay? Get all those sentences done. There's a clue. If it says Acadia, does it need a capital? Yes. It's talking about Acadia National Park. Good job. Okay. Let's go down to the bottom. One. It says write an interrogative sentence. What is an interrogative sentence? An interrogative sentence asks a question. Write an interrogative sentence about something you would like to know about Acadia National Park. What's a question you would have about this park? So write me a question. Make sure it's more than five words. Starts with a capital. Ends with a question mark. Good job. Okay. Today for cursive writing, you get to make a choice. Remember yesterday we did our test. So you may choose today if you want to do the camping story. Or you may turn the page on the back and talk and copy the poem. Try, whoops, sorry, Mrs. Cosby, dropping the book. It's a pretty heavy book. Try, try again. Let's read the poem. Try, try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Tis a lesson you should heed. Try, try again. Remember to do your warm up. Remember to put your N A M E at the T O P of the B A P E R. Good job. Don't forget that.
skip lines. Sure, if you don't cry again. Doing your best. Where do we start? We start over by the red line. If you're doing this story on the other side, remember to skip lines too. Make it an interesting story. I can't wait to hear about a camping trip. Maybe it's one you've really gone on, or maybe it's a pretend one you would like to do. Don't forget to do reading. 20 minutes, okay? Remember, 20 minutes in your book about Jesus. Just keep moving right along. No kickstands. You've got this. You're excellent readers. When we get back together again, I'm going to be amazed at how wonderfully you read. Remember, if you get to a word you don't know, begin at the beginning. Sound it out carefully. Try before you ask for help. If mommy always gives you help or daddy always gives you help, are you working hard? No. This is your job. Mommy and daddy might be working from home. You're working from home. This is your job. So try your very best. You have a reading worksheet today, too. Hopefully, I think Mrs. Craft included one about Marta. So make sure you read that carefully as well. Those are fun stories. Read the story first, turn it over to the back, and write neatly for the answers. If you have any questions, let me know, boys and girls. But right now, I'm going to sign out, get my Daffy Duck hat on. Moms and dads know who Daffy Duck is. Maybe you do, too, if you watch Looney Tunes. So Daffy Duck says, over and out. See you tomorrow. Well, oh, maybe not tomorrow. I'll see you in math in just a couple minutes. Okay, bye. Have a great day.